Verge. No, I had two meetings. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm I had sorry. to wake up. I've been working, but I'm here. <laughs> we're you're here and we're live. Hello, everybody. Hi. Um, this is a uh, I should I have a cold, so if my brain seems slower than normal than average, uh my responses is because of that. I apologize in advance, but my name's Kim or Kimberly Trung. I'm uh, the head of social at Duda. I'm so excited to have Marcy Bryant join us from Sync Digital Agency. We're going to give people a couple minutes to wander in. I know we ha we ourselves have been late. Normally, we start right at the top of the hour, um, so I won't give us too much time to linger, but okay. let's give um, everybody a moment to get in. Let us know where you're coming from. Hello from Seattle. Hi, Joanna from Seattle. I love Seattle, by the way. Mike from South Florida. What part? I grew up in South Florida. I grew up in West Palm Beach. Um, Marcy, where are you? I am in Detroit. Ooh, Detroit. I love Detroit. Yeah. Um, I've only been one time, but I need to go back at some point because it was a great time. Make sure you come when the weather is nice. It's a different yeah. place in the winter time. I did go in the winter. Warm. Yeah, I did go in the winter. You can really enjoy yourself, please. Oh my God, yes, I'll hit you up. Uh, hey folks, if you're just joining us, this is Kim uh, at Duda. I'm joined by the amazing Marcy Bryant. I'm going to give folks, oh, South Africa. Uh, good morning from Santa Monica. You're not very far from me uh rob hi rob from santa monica i'm in glendale right now maine we have maine pompano beach oh pompano beach i can't say that i spent a lot of time in pompano beach i was in like palm beach gardens west palm beach that's where boynton beach spent a lot of my childhood in boynton beach <laughs> so not very far jessica says hello from south carolina oh man i love it we're all over the map here all right, I'll give people a few more seconds Let us to hop on in. Let us know where you're signing in from. Drop them in the comments. We're saying hello. Yes, give hello, a minute. everybody. Hello, hello. Thank you all for joining us. Oh, we're going to have a great time. Marcy, you're joining us from your brand new office, yes? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Ooh, how exciting. Oh, yeah. yep. Still getting things together around here, so there's like tech everywhere. But um, yeah, this is my first broadcast. I got my brand new light, my brand new webcam. I'm on my brand new desk. Ooh, for Duda. Ooh, how exciting. Rob, mm -hmm. yep, we are so close, except we're like two hours apart at the same time. <laughs> like, we're technically what, 15 miles away from each other, but it'll take us like two hours to get to each other. Um, Mike, yeah, a little bit south of uh, your beach. Montreal, hello from Montreal. My dad's from Montreal. I I love Montreal as well. Colombia, oh my God, what part of Colombia? I'm dying to go to South America. I haven't been to South America at all. Anyway, you guys don't need to know my travel plans. Let's get into it. We are five minutes past the hour. We want to get into it. Marcy, you have a great presentation for us. Marcy, if you guys don't know Marcy, guys and gals, if you don't know Marcy, she is the CEO of uh, Sync Digital Agency. And outside of being the CEO of Sync Digital Agency, Agency, she has been spending years hiring leading, managing, and training sales and marketing teams globally while working with Fortune 500 companies and multi-million dollar corporations. So we are so excited to have you, Marcy. Folks, uh, just a bit of, um, uh, uh, again, I have this cold, my brain is in a fog, but if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments. If I don't hop on them right away, it's because I'm gonna give, I'm gonna try to find a great spot uh, when, uh, when Marcy's passed a certain section, she can close out a thought. So please go ahead and drop those comments and, and questions in the comments section and I will get to them uh, whenever appropriate. And then we'll have a Q&A section at the end, of course. But yeah, otherwise I'm gonna hand it over to Marcy and let's go ahead and get this ball rolling. Okay, so oh. I am pulling up the the, my presentation now I, I had a little misunderstanding I thought that you all were going to set it up but I've got it and I am ready awesome great yes let me know if you need anything um 
sorry for the technical difficulties, folk. And by difficulties, I mean just a slight delay as we upload the presentation. Y'all know what it's like. You've presented on Zoom. You've presented uh, on Google Meet. You know what it's like having to upload your slides and get them going. But yes, if you have any issues, let me know. I can upload your slides for you. In the meantime, folks, why don't you still let us know where you're at? If you haven't told us yet. Oh, hello, London. UK. Okay. Chicago. You used to live in Pompano Beach. Small world. It said it's processing. Great. It's a small okay. world, folks. Like it there. Okay, so share. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, I click slides and we there? Can you see it? We're we getting got? there. Oh, yeah, there we go. Awesome. Oh, Great. Yeah, like yeah, I said, I folks, that. drop us some questions. Oh, hi. Yeah. All right. I'll hand it to you, Marcy. So just a disclaimer, my camera is a, a little bit above my computer. So most of the time when you see me, I'll be looking down a little bit. So sorry if I'm not making eye contact directly with the camera. I'll be back and forth a little bit. But welcome to my presentation. I'm so happy to be here. My name is Marcy Bryant. As Kim previously stated, I am the CEO of Sync Digital Agency. And today I am here to talk about how you can grow your agency with Duda's White Label. There we go. Okay, so who am I? I am a mom of a toddler. You see my daughter right there. Her name is Nakia. We call her Nugget. And uh, she was definitely an inspiration for me in uh, figuring out how to earn more high ticket clients because children are expensive. If you don't know, <laughs> uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I started off uh, with freelancing. My first contract was two hundred and fifty dollars a month back in 2004. And I have definitely come a long way since then. I am a published author of two collaborative books, um, Leadership is the New Sexy and Building Beyond the Nine to Five, uh, Inspiring Stories of Successful Black Women are those titles. I'm also a contributing writer for Career Master Magazine, and I am a copywriter in corporate America. So that's a little bit about me. And who is this for? This is for marketing agencies who want to expand their services to include web design. This is for web designers who are looking to land high ticket clients. And this is also for creative professionals who are looking to start a digital business. What will you learn today? Three things. You will learn how to use Duda as the foundation of a high ticket marketing package. You will learn where to find high ticket customers and how to attract them. And you will also learn how to rebrand your Duda agency to fit your own corporate brand. How can I help? Well, that's why I'm here. I design business to business digital marketing systems that build relationships and grow sales using content technology and strategy. And the technology that I speak of, the foundation of that is the Duda white label software. And what makes me qualified? Well, aside from being a six-year user of Duda, I also have a few degrees, a BA in advertising, an MBA in marketing. I've got more than 25 years of experience. I've been uh, professionally in the industry since about 1997, and I got my start in about third grade in commercial. So I've been around to see uh, many aspects of marketing and advertising. And I'm also a certified digital designer in graphic and web design. So I've got plenty of perspectives and that corporate copywriting also helps me understand the executive perspective. So how did it start? As I stated a few minutes ago, I started off with $250 for an entire month. Uh, I was overworked and underpaid. I was frustrated and confused. I was discouraged and disappointed and I felt like a glorified order taker. So after that $250 contract, uh, I started getting into web design and my first web design contract also was for $250 and it was for a five page website. Can you believe that? Five pages. And back then um, I was designing on a different site that was not Duda, but I felt very limited because I only had so many images I could upload. Um, it didn't have a mobile version of it. There were, uh, I think, five pages before I had to pay it and what felt like to me at the time an insane amount of money. And the designs <laughs> were just so limited. 
and it just was not enough for me. And so I did a lot of research. And um, of course, there's a popular alternative. I'm not going to be mentioning anybody else's name, but um, it's an open source type of thing that many people go towards. And I just did not have the time uh, to handle that learning curve, nor did I want to. And everybody who said they got their website hacked had that particular open source. And I just, I didn't want that for myself or my customers. So I found Duda and it started off as being a mobile version for an existing website because I was still under contract. And um, I decided to start off with the mobile version and I liked it so much. I started bringing on clients and using Duda as a software to recommend for them. And this is before I even knew about affiliate marketing. So once I got into affiliate marketing, I was able to sign up as an affiliate marketer while I was still on the Duda uh, mobile plan. And then when the time came, I was able to transfer my website from that particular other uh, web software, hosting software over to Duda. So that's where I started. Um, in terms of why I felt overworked and underpaid, I talked to you about $250 for a five page website. And you can imagine what that turns into in my hourly rate. It was less than minimum wage. So that was quite a frustration for me. And I was confused on why I was attracting these clients. Why weren't people wanting to pay me more? But it was because I wasn't asking for more. I wasn't providing enough value. And I did not have specific people that I was reaching out to who really had an urgent need for my business in the way that I wanted to deliver my services. I thought that because I was a beginner, I needed to work with beginners, but my skill set in corporate America allowed me to work with, with businesses who have a bit more establishment, a bit more to lose, and a bit more resources to work with. So that's what I've geared towards. And um, I was discouraged and disappointed. I've had people go from 250 to even just offering me barter. Someone wanted me to create a, a funnel that would help them get five-figure touring every month, and they wanted to pay me in free songs, but I can't pay <laughs> any music. So things like that had me frustrated and confused, discouraged and disappointed, and I realized that all I did was just take whatever people wanted to give me, and I was just like just trying to take a work, and I was like, this is an insane cycle, and I'm not even happy with what I'm doing. I was actually pushing people away because I just wasn't interested in doing work like that. And I had to figure out a new way of doing things, especially being a new mom with less time, uh, more responsibilities. And I just needed to get more focused and more serious and, and bring more value. So instead of figuring out how I could get more clients at $250, I figured, how can I charge a lot more and have less clients? So that's what we're getting into yeah. today. So how's right. it going today? I have closed five-figure clients, 10,000, 12,000. And then some clients are a little bit less, but I'm still grateful for that. Um, but these days I'm not going any less than $3,000 to work with me. And um, I'm excited about the transformation that that's caused in my life. Recently I was working uh, and I ended up being uh, put on, what do they call it? The, the furlough where you only get four out of five days. And the money that I made from two clients covered the entire 20% of my lost salary because I changed my pricing and my strategy about how I work with clients. So that's what we're getting to today. Me working into my expertise, growing and scaling, attracting those qualified leads. So how to do to grow my business. I talked a little bit about that, researching those responsive sites. I started as an affiliate and, um, after I became an affiliate, um, I created my own account, as I said, when it was time for me to renew my account. And then um, I decided to get a second account because, well, update to a team account because I was starting to help customers. And I liked that I could um, create uh, sites for them. But agency gave me the ability to have them log in. So that was a totally different experience. I wasn't having to manage every single thing behind the scenes. It gave the clients a little bit more power, flexibility, as well as responsibility. And then additional details like um, having the data connection 
and client billing and things like that that really made me official as a business owner. Those are some of the things that made becoming an agency user a no brainer. So I'm currently leveraging Do The White Label as a flagship flagship software for my B2B digital marketing agency. Now, when I got into digital marketing many years ago, um, in terms of online consulting, the first person that I studied was the great Russell Brunson. And one of the things that he talked about was the importance of leveraging your uh, intellectual property, your thought leadership, and your expertise with a software in order to create residual and passive income. And ever since I read that, I've been thinking about how do I leverage software in order to create an additional income and also to have that passive income. And Duda became the solution for me. It was a new, a no brainer. So how did I do it? And what changed? What did I change? So the first thing was that customers told me what they needed and I accepted and I was just taking anything because second point, I just wanted to make some money. But when I made a shift to high ticket, I was able to help customers understand their business needs uh, outside of what they wanted. And sometimes they needed things that they weren't even aware of. So me being able to have these intelligent conversations with them based on my level of expertise. Uh, and that came from a, a combination of things, which was what questions am I asking them about their business? How am I able, able to relate their pain points to the solution that I provide for Duda? And how does Duda open the door to an even greater conversation? So for instance, yes, you have a website, but how will you attract people to it? And how will those people convert? What are you going to say on the website? What are the pictures you're going to use? So that allowed me to create larger packages still with Duda as the foundation. And Duda is what brings customers into me, but I'm able to upsell to fuller marketing packages, which is why I've got Sync Web Editor, which is the white label version of my Duda agency. But that is the software that runs Sync Digital Agency, which is my agency that handles the full marketing packages. And I did this because I wanted to provide valuable solutions to companies. What I found out starting off with just Duda, um, it was a great experience and I absolutely could just be a web designer and could have had some success. But my desire was to serve people on a greater level. And some of the challenges that I saw was, well, I've got this website and yes, you found these stock images for me, but my website's not converting. Well, what did you put on it? All I did was copy and paste the information that you gave to me. So. I saw that there was a quality issues with people being able to have that content. So either I'm writing content or I'm giving them copy templates for them to use. Or even if I don't have the copy templates, I'm finding those resources from other experts and sending them the link so that they can do that work themselves. Um, I'm thinking about the supply chain of what is required for their business. What does their CRM look like? Um, what are they looking like in terms of a client portal? Things like that. That's software integration. And my favorite phrase is, oh, that's a problem. Don't worry about it. There's a software for that. So I'm that there's a software for that kind of girl. And whenever my clients are talking to me about their problems, I have a plethora of software in my toolbox and I make sure that that stuff is all integrative uh, with Zapier because so is Duda. And whatever I have, I'm able to connect those software solutions to the customer for a full customer experience that not only helps the customer be more profitable, be more efficient with their time, but it also gives the end user a great customer experience and helps build the relationship through technology in a very automated and natural manner. And so I was not selective when getting customers. And now that I have been specific and honest about who I want to help and how, I'm able to get the type of clientele that I'm looking for just by saying what I'm interested in and telling people, people that know me, that know what I'm capable of and believe in me, even before I can promote it to the general public, they're like, I've got the perfect person for you. Because now I know exactly what you do and you can help them in a way that nobody else does. So that's the thing about operating in your expertise. And we, I first relied on my education for direction. And I told you we got plenty of that. But it wasn't the same as being an expert. Like my education helped me out to be an employee. But really getting into the industry, statistics, 
trend reports, studying other people who are experts in the industry, who are influencers and thought leaders. That was very helpful for me in understanding and getting a pulse on what's actually happening in the industry uh, from a consultative perspective so that I can speak about it from an, a CEO and an expertise perspective, as opposed to just sounding like an employee and an order taker, as I talked about before. And trying to figure it out myself, I am really, really smart, right? But I am not the smartest person ever. And one of the big things about entrepreneurship is it's all up to you. It's all up to you. You have to make all the decisions and you're like, you know, usually when I'm at work, I've got a manager or a boss I can ask and you don't have that when you're on your own. So being able to work with a business coach or grab books of people like Russell Brunson. I remember when I first decided that this was the path I wanted to go in. First, I was excited for this big idea and this big dream. And then I was like, oh, my gosh, I don't know anybody who's taken this path. I don't have it. If they can do it, I can do a kind of thing going on here. So where do I go? And I found my leaders, my mentors in books and online. And because of that, now I'm in the space where I can be that to other people. And I'm excited about that, which is part of the reason that I'm here. And uh, so working with the business coach to support my growth, I went from before my business coach, um, I had I was unemployed with a new baby and I had two hundred and fifty dollars to my name and she had a three thousand dollar package that was two hundred and fifty dollars a month. And I was like, if I can just get in the door, I know that I can make the rest of those payments without it being a sacrifice to my household and my family. And by the time the next payment was due, I had a five figure client and a better paying job than I ever had in my life. So. It works when you're working with someone who has those answers for you. And the final thing that I did was I started off positioning Judah as an external resource. As I told you before, I became an affiliate. It was just like, hey, this is a software that I like. This is what you should go to or offering it as an option and ultimately letting the customer decide. And now if you want to work with me, you cannot work with anything besides Judah. Uh, someone asked, do I include social media with my web design packages? I don't include them with my specific web design packages, but I do have larger marketing packages that are included. So I don't do all of it, but I will help someone out with um, keywords, content strategies, coming up with different topics, theme days based on connecting um what are the most important things and pain points for their customers to the type of information that they're trying to share online. And I am able to put that to them in, uh, in a structured approach, um, like in an Excel spreadsheet and or set it up into a, a software. So I said I'm not going to talk too much about other software because it's about Duda, but I do use some type of social media scheduling and I am able to plan those things. Um, and that's a combination of organic and curated content. So I leverage Duda as the, as the foundational software for my agency, and then I'm able to connect other software to either attract people to the Duda site, to integrate it, and to get people to convert. All right. So by implementing some of these things, how do you feel like your business will grow? Using your expertise with the perspective of a consultant, focusing it on a business instead of a hobby, becoming a professional, hiring people that can help you, whether it's on a freelance, a part-time, a long-term basis, being specific about the people that you're trying to reach out to, making your framework be something exclusive that nobody else has access to, deciding on your pricing based on your own budget, making your opinion be valid, with statistics that turn it into thought leadership? How are your skills making an impact in people's business? How are you standing out in your field with your specific clients? All right, so that's a little bit of wordplay right there. I hope it was uh, clicking for you. And then what will you get by transitioning to a high ticket lifestyle? You get more work balance, you get more money, more freedom, more flexibility, better results and better opportunities. When I tell you last year, I closed less clients than I ever have in my business. And I made more money in my business last year than I did in all previous years combined with the less clients than I have ever had before. It is a phenomenal transformation that you just cannot turn your back on once you get a taste of it. 
And so now I'm in growing and scaling. Um, I've gone even beyond due to agency to uh, bring on fulfillment teams. Shout out to the camel because they helped me out with building out the API. And now people are able to go on and click on their own site, decide for themselves and get started with their own account right through my account. And I can manage everything on the back end. So that's about growing and scaling. And then, so what's next? So here are some of the things that you need to focus on if you feel like this is the life for you. Nail down your niche and avatar. Health, wealth, and relationships are the main three things. So for me, it's based on wealth and relationships and maybe business health, right? Uh, and that's because I'm helping people with sales. So that's wealth. The marketing is relationships. And if you're increasing your business and expanding your market, then that's improving your business health. But what is my niche inside of that? It's the B2B marketing. And to be even more specific, I do my best work working with companies in STEM industries, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Define your service offering. What do you offer? Is it just one thing? Do you have different packages or proposals? Do you have upsells, downsells, cross sales? Do you have liquidating offers? Do you have one time offers? How are you going to solidify your pitch? Are you just going to wait for people to come to you? Or are you going to do some outbound communication? What will your proposal process look like? Will people have to apply to it or will it be readily available to the general public and anybody can find it? And the packages, are you thinking enough about your pricing? Is it just based on how much you feel like you need? Are you thinking about how much your degree costs, how much those coaches cost, how much it costs for your computer, for that software? Are you considering all those things in pricing your packages? Think about getting testimonials and creating case studies. And here's a side note, if you've got a little imposter syndrome and feel like you don't have enough experience, find some people that you know who need your help who love you enough to let you work on what I call their babies, their businesses. So if you know that your skills can be helpful to them, ask if you can help with their business in exchange for a case study and a testimonial. Use that content to share on social media and forums. Um, do your research and study um, sites like um, McKinsey and Deloitte so that you can have whatever your perspective is, supported by statistics. Um, and then use technology to automate processes so that you can be the most efficient because getting more money and spending less time on your business really is the ultimate combination that we're all trying to get to so that we are not self-employed. We are really CEOs because when you're spending all your time working in your business, you're self-employed. And we really want to get from that to just being entrepreneurs where we can work over our business and on our business. And we have the ability to use technology and bring in help to buy some of our time back to actually allow our business to grow without having to be in the weeds and hiring other experts to work in their expertise to get some results and expand perspective even beyond what we think is possible for our own businesses. I so, think that's brilliant. Can I, can I ask sure. you a quick question? On sure. the last slide, you say, find your niche. For people yeah. who don't know, you said you found a niche in STEM. How did you find a niche in STEM? Um, would you say that, you know, is it looking at your past career experience? Is it looking into your network? How does one find their niche if they don't exactly know what that might be? So I think your niche can come from a variety of things. For me, my niche was very unique. Um, I had a dad who was just really into science and it was important for him uh, to expose me to that. So I was really into nice. the science fair projects. And in Detroit, there was a program called DAPSEP, which is the Detroit Area Pre-College Engineering Program. So by seventh grade, I was building like uh, solar powered cars and AM, FM radios by hand and Saturn electronics. Yeah. And um, I also in high school studied math, science and applied technology. So the DAPSEP allowed me to be uh, approved to be part of a program for high school that I actually had to take a test to get approved for. And I had like special credentials on my high school diploma. So when I graduated from college and I was having trouble finding a job, a recruiter said, you know, people do a lot better if they have a niche. And I'm like, I can't even get into advertising. I'm stuck in sales. I can't <laughs> I'm not going to have a niche on something that I don't even have. And she's like, you got to think about it, put the pieces of the puzzle together. And I'm like, I dug all the way back. 
And I was like, what am I good at? What am I familiar with? And I was like, duh, STEM, tech, it makes sense. And I mean, as soon as I put that on my resume, my career skyrocketed. Even before wow. my business skyrocketed. And when I and what's crazy is I was I'm really good at it in my corporate job, but because uh just the imposter syndrome for being an entrepreneur, I was really, really nervous about doing that as the CEO. I know how to do it as an employee, but I was really nervous about stepping into my expertise and claiming that that was my thing as a CEO because I didn't have a manager to ask anymore. So I was afraid of losing that covering, but that allowed me to blossom the most in being able to have a particular voice. And as I stated, I study a lot. So now my expertise is a combination of all the experts that I have studied, along with all the things that naturally think. That's awesome. So basically, you kind of like took a passion um, yeah. from your past and made that your niche. That's yes. really great advice. I've never heard anybody say yeah. something like that before. We have a quick yeah. question that just came in. Do you tell your clients that from SEO Baza, do you tell your clients that Duda, um, that it's Duda under the bonnet when using Duda as a white label? I think it sounds like the answer is yes, right, Marcy? Yes, I absolutely do. Um, and the reason that I do that is Duda has clout. You know, it's, I feel yeah. like it's one of the best kept secrets in the web design agency. So you won't hear me shouting about it because I don't want everybody to have my juice, right? <laughs> I don't want everybody to have my stuff. But I want my clients, when they find me, I want them to know so that they can go look at it. And I can say that I am a white label agency and I have recreated this name under my brand, but this is the software that powers it. So I say, this is my brand, this is my software, and it's powered by. So that's how I frame that. But it's important that they know that so that they can go back and see the capabilities and even down to the accountability. Yes, you can you can depend on me for certain aspects of your account management and the design, but the technology behind the scenes is being run by Duda. Nice. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Feel free to go on. Keep going. Okay. I don't no stop problem. Your, uh, mojo. Yep. So I'm actually coming to the end of it now. So um, if you need more tips, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter. I am uh, from Detroit. I am born and raised in Detroit. Uh, I went to King High School on the east side of Detroit. And uh, I currently live in the suburb outside of Detroit, but once a Detroiter, always a Detroiter. And my dad still stays in the city, so I'm always there. Uh, my daughter's in the city with him right now. I'll be there this afternoon. Um, and so welcome to a fellow Michigander. Uh, so Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram, you can find me at Marcy Bryant MBA. I will say you probably, if you go there today, you won't see me having a lot of activity. Um, and that is because activity brings more people. And I'm actually at capacity at the moment while I restructure my brand. And so I'll be coming out uh, probably a little bit later this month and in the beginning of October with more content. So feel free to, to follow me now to get a head start so that when that content is there, you'll be the among the first to get it. And you see my website right here. You can check out my Duda web, white label site, syncwebeditor.com. Nice. Okay. Right. I see a few questions coming through. Rob asked, how do you find Duda performs for SEO? I think that Duda performs well for SEO, generally speaking, uh, because there are things that are built into it, like uh, the meta tags, your alt titles. I think that's good. Um, but I also think it's important to have content that supports it. So part of my marketing strategy is uh, when someone is working with me, I actually don't just do websites anymore. No one can come to me and just get a website because nobody's ever successful with just getting a website. So you have to go through an entire experience with me. And even if you say I've got somebody for SEO, well, I need to talk to them and make sure that they look at SEO the same way that I do. Are they going to be I doing didn't understand that? Oh, sorry. Are they going to be doing all the same market research that I do? And if not, then somebody's got to go, either them or me, because nobody's messing up my supply chain, which is going to mess up my results. Yeah. Uh, so I've got my own uh, SEO software that I use in addition uh, to do that in my own uh, framework about SEO that I share with customers and helping them understand what are the main topics of their content and how do they use things like uh, headers and headlines uh, in order to 
attract customers who are on search engines looking for what they have, but may not necessarily know that you are the person that provides that thing. Hope that was helpful. Nice. Okay. Sorry, Ash, Ash Smith. Um, I'm so sorry I skipped you. Um, you had asked, and this is a really great question because Marcy, you're obviously in Duda all the time. I'm biased, of course, because I'm Kim at Duda. But okay. um, Ashmith said, like, uh, Duda has so many glitches and often servers will go down frequently. Do you find that to be the case with you? Uh, and then, of course, Dorian, um, <laughs> I don't want to get into a fight, everybody. But like, uh, I, but these are really good points. And you're obviously a frequent yes. user. Yes. And you're with, you've been with us for six plus years. I imagine it's because yes. you're not experiencing that. But um, do you have any thoughts around that that you'd like to talk about? I would say shout out to the service team at Duda because when I call, they're there. Um, if I'm if they're not available immediately, I don't have to sit online. I can press a button and they they call me back. But that's agency. That's agency perks. Not everybody gets that. So if you're not satisfied with the level of service, you might have to upgrade your plan because I'm a VIP to Duda. They treat me nice because I'm an agency. Um, so I've got Duda's number saved in my phone. I can contact <laughs> Duda. Um, now, yeah. things have changed a little bit where you can't just email somebody directly, but once a ticket is created, you can respond to that email and it creates a chain. Um, I have not had any glitches that Duda was unable to repair. And I know that no software, just like no business is perfect. I'm not a perfect business owner and I cannot expect Duda to be that. I think what's important is not what happens, it's how does Duda remedy it? Uh, I've definitely how, had issues. How it's handled. Yeah, I've definitely had issues in the past. I mean, I just had issues yesterday. I've got some stuff I need to call you all about today, but I don't <laughs> press about it because I know Duda has my back. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's re that's really great to hear. Truly, it's yeah. music to my ears. Yeah, and um, then some things it's like not perfect. And it's like, ah, uh, like there's a client billing issue and I I'm going through and I'm like, but it's in beta. They're still working on it. They're still working on it. I know it's going to get better. So I'm thankful that Duda has so many things that other people don't. I'm thankful that um, even in the challenging parts, they work with me. I don't yeah. see it. Yeah, no, I mean, honestly, that's great. And thanks, Arba. I've been using Duda for over 10 years and haven't experienced any major downtime. No hosting company is 100% perfect. That, that is the one that is the truth right there folks i and mean usually, i've never used the perfect when, technology usually when duda is down it's because aws is down it's not because duda is doing something gotta know your tech train that supply chain duda can't do anything about their services like we can't do anything about duda let's just blame jeff bezos <laughs> just kidding yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, Rob. I'm a six-year duty user, and my experience has been outstanding. Nearly 100% uptime with phone tech support and one-on-one. -on -one. I swear to God, I haven't paid these people to say this stuff. Fixes troubleshooting feature help that is possibly the best in the biz. Oh, thanks, Rob. Again, this is music to my ears, and I know everybody has different experiences, um, mm -hmm. and the technology is not always going to be perfect um, for any brand. But I'm so glad to hear that you know all these positive comments. Um, I have another question for you, uh, Marcy. Can you okay. talk about some of those big projects that you that that have closed the deal for you using sure. Duda? Sure. So uh, there are two projects that come to mind. Uh, of course, there's STEM. One of them is a telecommunications company. And uh, as I started, I started off talking about uh, imposter syndrome, right? And going to people that you like or love and saying, I can help your business. So I did that for a friend. And she had like a fitness business and her website turned out good. But then she, I gave her confidence working with me, gave her confidence to explore her expertise, which was actually like ISO certified green belt and like process improvement. And she had a business called Strategy Heights for a client. She's like, I can't get this client to the next level because their marketing is all over the place. They need a website. They need this, this, that, and the other. And so she was like, she's, they've got this web designer and it's, but it's not working out. Um, it, it just, all he is is an order taker. He doesn't have any ideas. So she's like, we need you to come up with like concepts and all that stuff. So at first I closed that contract um, just talking about being able to talk about web design and some of the things that you need 
And when I was talking about what the needs are, I was mentioning Duda. And I was still going to say, hey, you can come in and use my software. You don't even have to pay for it. You can just come in and use it. It'll be part of her campaign. But this person could not get over what they were used to. They couldn't, like, I was like, dude, it's the easiest thing ever. If you can use that, like, I don't understand how you can't use this, but it just, it wasn't clicking for them. So I got an extra, like, almost $4,000 from scooping that business up. If you can't do it, <laughs> and that's what the, the project costs for, well, then you're going to have to sit this one out, and I'll take that money. Thank you. Amend the contract, please. That's. Okay, so that's really, I think that's a really solid point. And I think, uh, I, I, like, a, just a question to tag on to what you're just saying. How do you move from being order taker to that more thoughtful, that more strategic partner? Like, I, I know a lot of people struggle with that, right? Because you spend so many years being an order taker. And like you said, you know, at your own business, you are the CEO, you have no one else to go yeah. to. Like what has been, has there been any sort of like, you know, aha moments for you that helped you move from order taker to strategic partner? Yes. Um, staying broke, dealing with frustrating clients that, that barter for music instead of paying me. Uh, I was like, I've got to do something different. And so when I started researching uh, like business coaches, I didn't, I couldn't figure out how to do it on my own. So just so happened there, uh, like I was reading books and, then I started expanding my research and there happened to be a woman from Detroit who quit an engineering job to become an online coach. And she was my first coach. And it was about creating your signature service and your positioning and how to articulate your value and uh, making sure you're asking the right questions and how to like deliver a good process, develop your process. And there was homework assignments about how to pick your person, how to develop your package, how to build your process, how to decide on your pricing. And I just followed the steps. And in being able to do that, I was able to gain a, a very specific confidence that I just flipped my pricing like a switch one day and flipped what I wanted to do. I was like, I don't want to do that anymore. And I didn't announce it. I was just like, on February 1st, my minimum is fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah. And then yeah. because the, the, the program was like five thousand, I was like, I said that when I got in. But then no, I'm sorry, three thousand. But then I was like, do I just want to do fifteen hundred? What if I what if I charge thousands of dollars? Because I don't want to have to get two customers in order to pay for this. So what if I just charge it? And it was like, well, you can charge whatever you want, but build a package in that supports that. Do you know enough? Can you serve enough to support that pricing? And so I build out that process. And when I say this stuff worked well, my friend who um, was a strategic person, she introduced me to that lady. She talked me up so well and based on how I helped her for the free. And when I say the lady said yes before I even had my contract up, she actually had to wait for me to set up my contracts and my proposals so that she could pay me. I wasn't even ready for all the success that came my way just because I learned how to articulate my value and get my processes in order. Articulate your value, get your processes in order. I think that's a fantastic uh, hot tip. Sorry, yeah. I don't know if I interrupted you uh, for the previous question in terms of like big deals that you closed using Duda. Yeah, I know so, you were missing. So, so that deal started off, I was like, okay, so it's, it's between 5,000 and 7,000 because I was afraid to say seven. So I was like, okay. I'm gonna say five, four to seven. And she was like, well, what's five and what's seven? And I was like, well, you get some bonus things. And so like, I was <laughs> like, I don't know, I'm just, and so I was like, I'll send you the contract. So then that gave me a little bit of time to think more about it and to send her what it would be. And it was really part of what was originally part of it. But then I said, I'm just gonna scoop this up here and scoop this down here and, uh -huh. and seven. And she saw that and she was like, I'm going with seven. I need all of that right now. When can we start? And I was like, right after I get the contract together, oh my gosh, <laughs> I've been like two years. Nobody's, I didn't even need it. I was just like, okay, well, like a, a quick cash app or a PayPal. And now I need a full contract. I have bought contracts. They were sitting in my Google Drive. It took me two days to figure out how to put all that stuff into that software, get my invoices together, my payment schedule. And she was patient and waited on me. And the rest was history. And additional things adding on to it was like, well, I've got some stuff going on over here. And I'm like, but this contract is this contract is six months. So yeah. 
Now you into monthly retainers. That's going to be an extra five hundred dollars a month just for us to keep having the same conversations and for us to do the same work that you didn't finish in the original amount of time. All right, but no, I don't support my three hundred dollar customers anymore. However, I have transitioned them over to their own Duda accounts, and they have resources where I work with them where they're able to manage things on their own. So nice. I get them hanging but they're no longer my clients. I'm hoping that one day they will grow where they can come back to me and I can support them with uh, more thorough marketing services. But in the meantime, you know, if they have a question here or there, if they call me about something, I do take a few minutes to just, you know, address any concerns that they might have because their success does still matter to me. Uh, awesome. I think this is a really, so I have another question for you. Um, basically, like this ties into what you're just talking about. What specifically in Duda or is a part of the Duda package that really helps you close out those high end customers? Like, what is the value that you usually present? So I ask customers questions like, um, what are the things that you're tired of talking to customers about? What are the things that seem to take up the most time? What are the things that annoy you about working with your own customers? What are the things that you feel like you could do less often that would give you more time back? And then I start showing them aspects of um, the, the site that helps them with things. And then I start asking about segmentation. Like, is it just one customer? Is it multiple customers? So when I get into my marketing and segmentation, you can have dynamic pages or landing pages that are based on each one of those segments. Uh, you've got anchor points where if you just want to have one long page, if you don't have a lot of information, but you want to look established, you can just have one long page with the anchor points that looks like a more thorough website, but it's just kind of like a click through long landing page. You have personalization, you have geolocation, uh, you've got headers, you've got a plethora of templates to choose from, you've got SEO built in, you can integrate MailChimp, Google Drive, you can put Zoom in there, you've got memberships now. I mean, what else? <laughs> I mean, uh, I can run it off because I talk about it all the time. Uh, I, I, all of this is, is very <laughs> astute uh, points. I think that's awesome. Um, you had mentioned earlier, and I actually don't actually know what this meant. I was going to ask you earlier, but then I was like, let me hold off. Okay. Uh, you said you mentioned finding your avatar. What do you mean by that? And, and how did you figure that out? So finding your avatar is about finding your ideal client. And I use avatar because a lot of people have heard about, uh, heard that, but they've also heard ideal client. Um, ICP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, gotcha. yes. Ideal client profile, ideal customer profile. But it's essentially the perfect person for you to do business with. Um, and that could either be a reflection of yourself, uh, a reflection of who you used to be. So if like if your your expertise is helping somebody go from one stage in the business to the next from based on where you are to where you where you were to where you are now, then it's that it could be based on uh, your experience, like your corporate experience. But here's what I teach. And I'm going to give you all a little bit of my framework. I People usually have to pay for this, but I'm going to give it to you. OK, so B2C is different than B2B because in B2C, you're thinking like demographic psychographics. Now, there's some similarities, but it's different. You're thinking about one person in a business to business standpoint. We're talking about the big bucks now. You're thinking about STEAM, which is what I call uh, like the persona of the business. So uh, okay. you've got sales, tech, executive, accounting, and marketing. The salespeople want to know how is this going to make help me close some more sales, get some more leads. The tech people want to know how is this going to integrate with our IT? Um, is it going to help us with our product development? The executives want to know how is this going to improve, improve employee morale, make us more competitive in the market, help us scale to, on a global perspective, help us reach our mission and vision, HR, legal, operations, things like that. Accounting wants to know how is it paid for? How much time do we have? How long will it be before we see our return on investment? Marketing wants to know how does it contribute to our brand? How is it going to make us look good? How is it going to help us with our customer experience? How is it going to help us with relationships with customers? Now, the reason that you have to consider all five is because you're probably only talking to one person, but that one person represents one of those five assets and they still have to 
talk in some way to the rest of those assets because anything that's pertinent and valuable to a business is going to touch usually a multitude of those, whether like primarily or secondarily. So you have to make sure that your content and what you're sharing with the customer, whether it's through your thought leadership content, uh, your website, automation process, and even in the sales process, asking those questions uh, in consideration of those people and sharing it with them because they're behind the scenes like puppet masters making the decisions and you may never even talk to them. And if the gatekeeper does not have that information to share, you're losing. And even if they can convince them, but they don't have a full understanding, you can get the contract and they will be terribly dissatisfied with you because their needs were not addressed in the process of delivering the service or agreeing what will be delivered upon. Uh, that is brilliant. That's uh, gold. Dorian says, Steam, that is gold. It is gold. Dorian, you also brought up Zapier, which is a really great oh, app. Awesome. I'm sure all everybody on this call knows exactly what I'm talking about. If you are not utilizing Zapier to automate and save your life, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know what you're doing, but Zapier... Shout out to Zapier. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to give you a little tip on Zapier and the API. Ooh. With Duda and an agency account, you only get one API. So when you get customers, you have to be particular about giving them access to your API because they mean, that means they can access your master account that has all your clients' information. So what you do is you get a large Zapier account. And then you are responsible for that. You connect the things and then you charge them a monthly fee that helps you pay for your Zapier. And oh. then you charge them the same rates based on what Zapier would be. So if you've got 25 Zaps, that's the same amount as unlimited Zaps because it's more than 20. So that means yours is going to be the same amount as my full amount. So if you've got six clients who have 25 Zaps each, are you getting your Zapier paid for six times over every month? Do the math. Nice, nice. Joanna says it would be great to add a Canva app. Canva, love Canva. Yeah. Uh, another great app. If you are not taking advantage of uh, Canva web designers, uh, web professionals on this call, I'm, I'm sure you are. I'm talking, I'm probably preaching to the choir. Love Canva. Um, okay, I know we only have a few minutes left. Folks, mm -hmm. if you have any questions, get them in. But, you know, I'm just going to keep uh, steamrolling until the end of the hour. I would like hour. to hear a little bit more. Um, Go ahead. So yeah. For those of you who need some support <clears throat> understanding B2B, if you're here and you're looking to sell web design, more than likely it's going to be to other business customers. And, you know, people, individuals get websites too, but mostly you're selling to businesses. So if you're having a little bit of trouble figuring out B2B or if what I've shared today opened your eyes to some new things, Make sure you go to my website, uh, marcybryantmba.com backslash I am B2B. Make sure you save that backslash I A M B, the number two and B. Marcybryantmba.com backslash I am B2B. I'm giving you exclusive access to join the wait list for my upcoming I am B2B marketing challenge. And the reason I called it the I am is because before you can, you have to believe that you are. And before I became a successful graphic designer, web designer, entrepreneur, high paid consultant, I had to believe that I am. And that was the first step to changing. OK, let's nice. see. And let's see. Give me just a second. OK. Yeah. Anton asked me to type this in here. So um, if you go there, it's coming up next month. We're in September 1st. It's coming in October. And if you go there, you are able to sign up to join the wait list. And as soon as doors are open, you will find out about it. You will be the first to know. So I'm going to share that and uh, we'll be having that on the screen in just a second. Oh, OK. This is a good question. Rob asked regarding Steam, sales, tech, exec. What does the A stand for? Marketing. Accounting is the A. Accounting, love yes, it, love it, love it. Guys. Love it. Yeah. Um, I couldn't remember that one either. Accounting, Steam, that's really great to know. And then Arba says, kudos to Dudo for adding the ability to upload videos instead of using YouTube. Why, thank you. I wish I could say that that was me doing it, but it was not me. Um, again, folks, we have a few minutes left uh, before we close out. I guess uh, one last question that I have for you 
okay. is how did you come up with the pricing that you came up with for your packages? And then do you change them? Yes, I changed them. Um, and now I have a value ladder. So I don't just have one package. Um, I started off with just having the websites and then I expanded to a package that included um, SEO, copywriting, web design, uh, some promo video creation, uh, some web, uh, web and funnels and workflows and some social media. Uh, and so that was a package that was about $7,000. And now I am looking to expand beyond that. Um, the last project that I had was $10,000 flat, and that was to help a company build a uh, national, national directory for Black healthcare providers. So um, that went up to $10,000 because I brought on a software engineer that, and I hired the camel to uh, get a template directory, and then my software engineer customized it. Uh, and then I, I used Paperform and built a massive, I mean massive uh, workflow that had like, gosh, 260 different questions on one in like 19 different wow. segments. It was super duper massive. And I had a wow. team of about six people and I've got apprentices that I utilize um, from a partnership that I have with a company in Canada that helps me find uh, up and coming marketing professionals. So those are some of the things, but now I'm expanding to something called Sync to Sale, and that will be helping businesses align their marketing sales and service teams to um, have better communications, have a better customer experience, and ultimately expand their market share. That's awesome. Thank you. So adding on, and, and that's what helps me with the value ladder. Awesome. You just reminded me, I'll, I'll make a quick plug for Duda. The okay. Duda blog actually has a really great article that we put live not too long ago about how to uh, come up with pricing. If you are struggling and you, uh, you, you watch this webinar and you're like, I don't know how to price things. Uh, she said this, but I currently charge this. I don't know if, I, you know, there is a really great guide that we put together. Again, it's on blog.duda.co and it is all about pricing and how do you price your services and how do you price um, your uh, the, the entire thing. Um, and we take into account everything. In fact, a lot of the things, Marcy, you actually said on this call, um, your living expenses, your uh, services that you're purchasing. Uh, New office. The, gamut. <laughs> the office, uh, yeah. the beautiful office that you're now in. Um, and of course, don't miss Dudacon happening September 13th through the 15th. If you have not signed up for, for it yet, it's just dudacon.duda.co. We have three days of amazing presentations. Uh, if you loved what you saw today, you are definitely going to love uh, the pres presentations and the speakers that we have lined up for Judicon. And Marcy, you have been amazing. Would love to have you back again. Um, and again, thank you so much. Oh, Jamie, you're going to go ahead and put the link in there and do my job for me. Fantastic. Thank you so much. <laughs> for, uh, or Jaime. Jaime. Sorry, I called you Jamie. I'm going to assume your name is Jaime. Um, again, thank you, Marcy, so, uh, for being here and for joining us. This is such a great inspirational story. And I hope all of you walk away thinking, hey, that could be me. I'm looking to work smarter, not harder. Thanks, well, everybody. Thanks so much for having me. Happy marketing, awesome. everybody. Bye. Happy marketing. Oh, I see, Rob, you asked a question about Dudacon. I, I, will, I will answer this before you say, before we say bye-bye. Um, will you have parts of it recorded? Yes, the entire thing will be recorded. RSVP anyway, you will get the emails afterwards uh, letting you know how to watch the webinars on demand. Go ahead and sign up. Uh, everything is recorded. Everything we do, every single webinar, this webinar will be recorded and available on our YouTube channel as well. Uh, yes, awesome story, Marcy. Thanks, everybody. Now, Kim, I've got one request for you. I oh. want to make my way to Florida so that I can visit Duda in person. Well, I'm I'm not in Florida, but uh, you you should visit our Denver office. We have okay. a really beautiful office in Denver and Palo Alto. And uh, Denver, Palo Alto. Okay, you know what? I must have read some wrong information. I thought there there must be a due to something in, in Florida. It must not be you. But I heard Denver's a very nice place, and so is Palo Alto. 
we have a lot of big customers in Florida. I'm from Florida. Maybe that's what, where the wires got crossed as I was talking okay. about Florida a lot at the top yeah, of this maybe call. Maybe so. Okay. Got it. <laughs> got it. Uh, thank you, everybody. Well, there all the time. Hopefully we can connect in person one day. See you later. Yes. Bye.